will it turn around? I set my feet on the road. I'm ready for the tire
Praise the Lord. Sí. To contribute something to the lives of your people. Use me to be a blessing to them. If you want to encourage, you want to challenge, you want to instruct, you want to warn, you want to lift up. I submit myself this one hour. Use me for your people, O God. Let whatever I say not be my words. Flow through me and flow to your people. And let there be no hindrance in me to stop your word from flowing forth. And may there not be any hindrance in your people that will hinder your word from flowing through them. Bless everyone who is here in the worship service today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The message I have for you this morning is a challenge. Press on and win the prize. Press on and win the prize. Look at Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. These were the words of Paul the great apostle. In this chapter of Philippians chapter 3, Paul is giving us his life testimony. Although I'm concentrating on verses 13 and 14 today. But look at those two verses before I give you some explanation on the chapter. Brethren, I can't not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. From that verse 14, I bring the topic, press on and win the prize. In the 13 verses before this verse 14, the apostle gives us his life testimony. One, he tells us of his past. Two, he tells us of his present. And now three tells us about his future prospect. One, I said, he talked about his past. In verse 5 and verse 6, he tells us about the great credentials that he had. Paul the Apostle was a great man. He had great antecedents. He said he was circumcised circumcised on the eighth day, that was something a Jew will be proud of. They said he was of the stock of Israel, that was something that you couldn't uh, controvert, you couldn't argue against. He tells us he was from the tribe of Benjamin, one of the important tribes in Israel. Important because that was a tribe that produced the first king of Israel. He said he was not just a mean Jew, he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. If you are looking for a Hebrew, he was number one. Meaning that his father, his mother, his all the two lines, all his ancestral lines, they were pure Jewish stock. As touching the law, he said he was not an ordinary Israelite, he was a Pharisee, a strong uh, person from a strong sect in the whole land of Israel. He had zeal 
He was self-righteous. And as far as uh, the law of uh, Israel goes, he was blameless. That's the past of the man I'm talking to you about. He had great, great credentials. He had noble birth. But Paul is going to tell us in this chapter that all his credentials, all his antecedents, they were of no use in his present and his future prospects. Talking about winning the prize. Paul said, I had a great pass, but my pass is useless in my pursuit of the prize of God. That's a message to all of us today. We may have great, great pass. We may have wonderful antecedents. We may have nobility of birth. We may have great achievements. But in our pursuit of God's highest, in our pursuit of the prize of God, all those paths, they are useless. But 7 Paul says, all those things, I count them lost because of Christ. And he begins to tell us, number two, about his presence. He tells us that his past, his present, was far removed from his past. He said those things that were important, those things I valued, some, those things I, I held in high esteem before, now I count them lost in the present dung for Christ. When you are pursuing Christ, when you are looking and running after Christ, all those things that were valuable to you before, those things that were great in your sight before, those things you held in high esteem before, when you turn your eyes upon Jesus, all those things suddenly they will become dim and valueless. Paul says, before I knew Christ, my bath was a thing of pride. Before I knew Christ, my achievements were things of pride. Before I knew Christ, my credentials were things of pride. He said, but now in the present, now that I know Christ, now that I know him, he said, all those things, I count them lost, I count them dung, I count them useless because of Christ. When you are born again, the new birth brings a radical change into your life. Does not the Bible say, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And Paul says, the day I knew Christ, the day I had contact, touch with Christ, the day I gave my life to Christ, those things that were valuable, those things that I worship, those things that I held in great, great esteem, I look at Christ on this side, I look at those things on that side, and all of a sudden those things become useless. That, that I may win Christ, when Jesus comes into your life, it changes your world view. It changes your value set. It changes your prospects in life. 
Because when Jesus comes in, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, when it comes into your life, all those things of gold and silver and precious things of this world, they become suddenly useless of no value. And Paul says, I counted those things great before, now I count them loss. Paul says, in my presence, I never make the common mistake of normal men. They get engrossed. They get enthralled. They go get excited by the present wonderful future, the present future, uh, the wonderful present they have at the moment. They become so excited by those things that they forget the future. Paul says, my past was great. My present is greater. Because now I have Christ. I have He whom angels worship. He belongs to me. My present is greater than my past. He said, but you know, I don't even value the present as much as I do the future. Because I reckon that the glories of the future that are coming, they are far, far greater. And the troubles and the pleasures of the present, they are nothing compared to the glory that shall be revealed in me. And so he speaks about his past and his present. Then he tells us about his future. His future prospects. He talked about the past in two verses. He talks about the present in two verses. But he takes seven long verses to talk about his future. A man's language gives him off, tells us who he is. And as you look at the language of Paul the Apostle, you will see his future prospect in bold relief. He tells us, I have an immediate prospect and I have a distant prospect. An immediate future, a distant future. In verse 8, number 1, that I may win Christ. He says, I have won gold before. I have won silver before. I have won the great things of the world before. I have won great certificates before. Because, do I need to tell you, Paul was an educated man. That man was a lawyer according to the style of his days. You couldn't read his epistles for long before you knew this this man was very educated. He said, but now I won all those things, but those things are useless. Now I'm looking, I want to win Christ. I'm, that's what I'm pursuing. That's what I have in prospect in the future. And that itself is a mouthful. That one itself is a mouthful. Because a man that had worked with God for 28 years, he said, I still want to win Christ. Immediate prospect that I may win Christ. In verse 9, it says that I may be found in Him. Not in self. Not in sin, but that I may be found when Christ will come to find me in Him. Then in verse 10, he says that I may know Him. Oh, that's a strange thing. Those of you are wives who are husbands here, how would you feel surprised 
After 28 years of marriage, and then your wife was talking to someone. Says, yes, you know, my dear, my friend, I'm still trying. I want to know my husband. You will look at her face and say, Are you drunk or you are normal? 28 years, you don't know my, you don't know me. When five children already, you still don't know me. That's exactly like what Paul was saying. He, he said, The more of him I know, the less of him I know. He said, I'm still looking for him. That I may know him. I still have that in prospect. Then he said, You know, I still have an a distant prospect as well. He said in verse 11, I want to partake in the final resurrection. I want to rise up with him on the final day. I want to be with him when, he, when the dead in Christ will rise up for us. In verse 12, he says the second thing that I may finish the race. He said, I want to grab the winning, I want to get to the winning point. That I forget the things that are behind. I have a goal before me. And I'm pursuing that. I have that in prospect. And then finally he says, I want to win a prize. The prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Look at all these things, this man has in prospect. Three in the immediate, three in the distance. It was a purpose-filled life. No wonder this man could not be bored with Christ. This was why this man could not think of calling it quits with Christ. There was a man that had something worthwhile living for. There was a man that had something prospect in prospect that occupied his attention. Shall I ask you, fellow believers, do you have anything living for? What is the reason behind all failures of faith? The reason behind every failure of faith is because there is no prospect in the future, nothing looking forward to. Nothing they are living for. Let us eat and drink, tomorrow will die. Such a life will be a boring life indeed. But here was a man. He had something worthwhile living for. I want to win Christ. When you win all the money in this world, that couldn't satisfy. I want to win Christ. When you win all the laurels in this world, that couldn't satisfy. I want to win Christ. When you win all the accolades, all the uh, degrees, all the achievements in this world, that couldn't satisfy. I want to win Christ. To be found in Him. To know Him experientially. To partake in His final resurrection. To finish my race and to meet Him at the end of the line. To climb the podium and win the prize like they do in the stadiums of this world. That man had something living for That's why you couldn't deter him. This man pressed forward until he won the prize. And he's teaching you and me today, believers. How can you win the prize? The prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. How can you win the prize? He tells us three keys and I'll give them to you before we pray today. One, forget the past. Two, 
fill up the present. Three, focus on the future. That's the key Paul put in our hands today. That's what he did with his past. That's what he did with his present. And that's what he did with his future. That man was a champion. And if you want to win the same prize that Paul won on the final day, this is what to do. One, forget the past. Two, fill up the present. Three, focus on the future. That's done. The prize is in your pocket already. In, Philipp in Philippians chapter 3. And of course, that's the three points of my message today. Philippians chapter 3, verses 5, 6, and 7. I told you about the past of Apostle Paul. And you know, he is an example, he is a pattern to them that shall hereafter believe. That's what he said. Paul had a past. We all do. We all do. We all have a past. But can I please analyze for you under this point one? One, Paul had a valueless past. Two, Paul had a valuable past. And maybe we all do today. We all have valueless past. Thank God for those of you who have given your life to Christ. Those of you who are born again. Those of you who have your names in the book of God in heaven. You have put away sin. Sin has come out of you and you have said bye-bye to the devil and you are a child of God. You have a valueless past before you knew Christ. Thank God you have a valuable past since you knew Christ. For all those the sinners of this world, for all the people that reject Christ in this world, for all those who refuse to receive Christ as Savior in this world, they are past. It's one long, valueless existence. Until you are born again, your past is valueless. Maybe 30 years. Your past may be 40 years. Your past may be 70 years. Until Jesus comes into your heart. Until you become a child of God. Here you are, a valueless past. As, as you look at the life of Paul, you see his valueless past, which consisted of his sinful life, his days of empty religious profession, his days of uh, empty religious activities, he speaks about that past in verses 5 and 6. He was a proud Jew. He was a Pharisee for that matter. He had zeal without God. He was persecuting the people of God. He had self-righteousness. The righteousness that is not found in Christ Jesus. That was his past. And this past filled his mind. And this is why many people are not born again. They are so preoccupied with their past. They are, they are useless past. Some of them say, see all that I've achieved in this world without God, without Bible, without being born again, what do I need God for? See all the achievements, see all that I've been able to achieve. What do I need God for? Friend, 
valueless past without Christ and you find a lot of people they also get engaged and gross with their past oh they said I've done too bad too many bad things oh they said for me God cannot how can God forgive me I've gone beyond that level I've, in fact I've gone beyond what God God can never I've, I've gone too bad too well too far I cannot find forgiveness from God. I know that I am not good and I see I have killed, I've committed abortion, I've there is no evil in this world I've not done. How can God look at somebody like me and have mercy upon me? Forget about me, I can never have mercy from God. They are so busy with their past. Anyway, me yo but what did Paul do with his past? He forgot his valueless past. His useless past. If you are going to find Christ today, if you have peace of mind today, you need to forget your past. Forget the evil. Forget everything you have done. And forget that, well, God cannot forgive you because this morning He can forgive you. And you have to come down like Nicodemus. You have to come down like Zacchaeus. That man had great achievements. He was a rich man. He had money. He had wealth. He had affluence. But he came down. He had to climb a tree. He forgot about his dignity. He forgot about his nobility. He forgot about whatever he had. He climbed tree like a monkey because he wanted to see Jesus. That's why many are not saved. He said, it belittles me to associate with all these riffraffs in the society. This uh, wretched of the earth, they say they are Christian born again. Look at them. How can I identify with people like this? Forget your past. You have to stoop low if you are going to enter into the kingdom of God. Paul forgot his valueless past. But he got born again. And he began to have a valuable life. But at this point in his life, Paul looked back 28 years of following Christ. And he said, I forgot my valueless past. Now I have to forget my valuable past. If you are going to win Christ, to win the prize of God's high calling in Christ Jesus, you have to be like Paul. All your years as a Christian, forget all that. All the labels. By this time, Paul was a preacher. He had been a teacher. He had been an apostle for 28 years. He had preached great sermons. He had labored most abundantly. He had written great episodes. And yet in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He said, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. That's not the things before he got born again. But the things he has done up to this point as a Christian, the things he had done as at this time as a preacher, preacher, teacher, apostle. Paul said, I forget all those things, all those sermons, all those labels, all those prayers, all those fasting, the self-denial, the persecution, the prison, the suffering. Let me tell you. Paul wrote Second Corinthians four years before he wrote Philippians. 
Before these Philippians that I'm reading to you, he wrote Corinthians four years before that time. Look at his past. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and in verse 22. Second Corinthians 11, 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. In deaths often. Of the Jews five times I received forty stripes minus one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was told. Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys of home. In Paris of water. In Paris of robbers. In Paris by my own countrymen. In Paris by the heathen. In Paris by the, in the city. In Paris in the wilderness. In Paris in the sea. In Paris among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness. In watchings of whom. In hunger and thirst. In fastings of whom. In cold and nakedness. And if he spoke and spoke and spoke. And now, four years later. Philippians chapter 3, Paul said. All the things behind me. The stripes, the beating, the suffering, the shipwreck, the robbers, the sea, the weariness and painfulness, the hunger and the tears, the cold and the nakedness. Says I forget all those things. That's how to go forward. If you sit down there and you are so occupied, oh, thank God, I have done this for the Lord. I have done this for Christ. I have done that for Christ. You are not going to win the prize. Look at those who are running. In the stadium. They don't look at the ground they have covered in the race. They look at the ground they are yet to cover. That's how to win the prize. And Paul says, I forget the past. A wise man, this Paul. He, he had done great things. He exceeded all of them. What Peter could not do, Paul did it. John saw Jesus face to face. What he couldn't do, Paul did it. Here was a man that was, he was an achiever. Not an achiever just in the world, an achiever in the kingdom of God. But he said, I forget all the past. And I'm just looking forward to that prize. Something ahead of me over there. I'm not going to allow my focus to shift. Thank God for the past. But if I'm going to win the future, I must forget the past. My beloved pastors, my dear brethren, all you workers, all you members, all you believers, you will forget the past. If you are going to win the prize of God's high calling, there is a higher calling. Higher than the one you know. What is the greatest calling in this world? The calling to be a professor? That's a small thing. Calling to be a governor? That's a small thing. Calling to be a to represent your country in another nation? A small thing. Calling to be a doctor? That's a small thing. Calling to be a lawyer? A senior advocate of Nigeria? That's a small thing. The greatest calling. The high calling of God. In Christ Jesus. Paul said, if you are going to win that calling, forget the past. 
your valueless past, your valuable past, forget them. That is the time you can be qualified and win the prize of God's high calling. What a secret Paul the Apostle is putting in our hands today. What's the reason for much backsliding? What's the reason for much stopping along the journey to heaven? What's the reason for much uselessness in the kingdom? It's because they get preoccupied with the past. The past success, past achievements, past injuries and past failures, past problems, past pain, past failures. They don't forget those things. Have you ever seen a woman who said, I will never have a child anymore in my life? In my life, after this one I've had, look at the pain. Look at the labor. Look at the, the, the suffering in the, in the hospital. Ah. No. No more child. That would be an unusual woman. You know what our women do? The moment the child comes, they forget the pain. They forget the past. And if you ask her, are you going to have another child? She will tell you, yes, when I'm stronger, we have another one. How about all the pain? How about the difficulty? That one is small. The future, the things I get after that pain, they will compensate more than compensate for that pain. My dear brothers and sisters, I, I don't know me. the last message I'll preach to you. So I challenge you, march on and don't be occupied with the past. Whatever you have achieved, forget about it. Whatever you lost, forget about it. Whatever you missed, forget about it. Your past that was valuable in the sight of God, forget about it. You have done what nobody has ever done for God, forget about it. You have served God extraordinarily, forget about it. You have suffered unusually for God, forget about it. And if you are a sinner here, your past is bad, forget about it. Come to Christ today, He can change your past and give you a bright future. And so Paul says, I forget the past. The bad past, the good past, I forget everything. There's a counsel for us in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Chapter 7 verse 10. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than this? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning these. There are many deeper life people that are not going forward. Because they are concerned about the past. They said the past was better than this. The past was better than this. The past was better than this. God said I should tell you. Say not thou. What is the cause? The former days were better than this. Don't forget about those former days. He said, your inquiry about the past is not a wise inquiry concerning these. Now, as we pursue the prize of God's high calling in Christ, we come to the second council of Paul the Apostle. Point number two, fill up the present. As we look at Philippians chapter 3, Paul tells us that hey, there were some things in the past that I forget about them. He said, but there are some things in the past that will help the present. And he's giving us counsel, don't forget them. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, Ye doubtless, and I count all things but loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, 
For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And I can't them but dung that I may win Christ. Here is where you have to pay attention. Paul said, I forget the past. But there is something in my past that I will not forget. He said, Sometime in the past, I counted some things lost for Christ. In the past, I counted past tense. He said, but now in the present, verse 8, I count those things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ my Lord. Then he says, in the present continuous, I continue, I do continually count them but don't that I may win Christ. Now listen, here is the message of Paul for us. One of the things in the past you must not forget is your consecration. Paul said, I had a past consecration. I have a present consecration. And I have a present continuous consecration. That is the exercise you have to carry out in the present. To continue to renew your consecration. To continue to occupy for Jesus. He said, you know, in the past, I looked at all those things, the riches, achievements, greatness, I count them useless in the past. He said, now as I look back in the present, I still count them but don't. He says, as I come to the future, I do count them day by day but don't. What a life. A life that never lost his consecration. Many people start with consecration. But they they throw away their consecration before long. Paul said, I went through prison and she kept my consecration. I went through privation and yet I kept my consecration. I went through pain, shame, rejection, ridicule, Contempt. I hold my consecration. I went through extreme personal difficulties. I count those things but don't. In the present, I still suffer for Christ. The consecration of yesteryear. I have, I have not lost them. The gold of yesterday. The precious stones of yesterday that I counted as dung yesterday today they have not turned to gold in my eyes they are still dung still what a lie that was so Paul the apostle that was the man God used beyond his generation and if you are a child of God one of the things you should never forget about your past your past consecration your past commitment your past yieldedness your past surrender to God I ask you is it still the same today have those things that were dung in your eyes before have they turned to gold now the precious stones of yesterday you counted them as dung are they still dung today do you say Lord Jesus Christ is he still your chief joy above every other thing Paul gives us six things he's doing in the present in verse 8 he said I consecrate all things today that I may win Christ tomorrow that's what he says in verse 8 I consecrate all things today that I may win Christ tomorrow I hope you know that to win Christ you will need to consecrate something 
That he said it in other places in First Corinthians chapter nine verse twenty-five. He said there in that verse twenty-five, every man that strives for mastery is temperate in all things. The wrestlers, they will deny themselves of some things just to win a medal on their neck. The athletes, the swimmers, they deny themselves of everything to climb the podium and just put a medal on their neck. Paul said their crown is corruptible crown. Said my own crown is incorruptible. He said I can give up anything for that sake. I can give up my sin to win that crown that can never fade. I can leave my convenience to win that crown that will never fade. I can lose the popularity of this world so as to win that crown that will never fade. I can lose and forfeit the acceptance of the people of the world, the honor and the prestige that people will give me just to win Christ on that day. But you over there, you are not like Paul. Because of shame, because they will make jest of you in the office, because of what they will speak, you denied Christ in your life. But Paul said no. I consecrate all things today. I may win Christ tomorrow. Number two in verse nine. He said, I cast aside my own righteousness today that I may be found dressed in his righteousness tomorrow. That's in Philippians chapter 3 verse 9. Number 3 said in verse 10. He said, I partake of his suffering today that I may partake of his resurrection power tomorrow. He says, I partake on the fellowship of his suffering today so that I may taste the power of his resurrection day after. In First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 31. First Corinthians 15, 31. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. I die daily. I die to sin. Daily. I die to self. Daily. I die to the world. Daily. I die to the pleasures of this world. Daily. I die to the honor of the world. Daily. I die to the ridicule of the world. Daily. I die to conveniences of the world. Daily. Thank God, the same eye that died is the same eye that will be raised up. Verse 52, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. When he spoke about 31, I died daily, he closed with verse 52. He said, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, the trumpet shall sound the dead shall be raised, incorruptible. We shall be changed. We who die daily, we die to sin, we die to self, we die to the world, we die to the, anything that the people may say or do, we are going to be raised up on the final day. Not just dying physically, I die daily. That means every day when I wake up, I tell myself, I say it may be today. If it costs me today to die for my faith, 
I'll die daily. He calls me today to serve him to the point of death. I die daily. That's the ambition of Paul the Apostle. Go back to Philippians chapter 3. In verse 12, he says, I follow after. I press forward today that I may achieve glorification, completion tomorrow. In verse 12, I pursue today, I press forward today that I may be glorified the day after. In verse 13, I forget today the things that are behind that I may reach unto the things before me tomorrow. I'm telling you what Paul was doing in the present. I forget today the things that are behind that I may reach the things before. And then finally in verse 14, he said, I press forward against all odds, against all difficulties. I press forward, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says in Matthew 11, verses 21 and 22, it says, from the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. You have to be violent with your flesh, violent Violent with the devil, violent with the world, violent with temptation, violent with trials. You have to be violent and press forward against all odds. If you are going to win the eternal prize. Listen to me. Those who run 100 meters, try to understand. There is an instrument the people have to measure their speed. That instrument will not only measure the speed of the man running, it will measure the speed of the wind blowing against him. Oh, well, no. And that is what they use to calculate whether it's a world record or it's not a world record. If this man is running against a powerful wind and he has a record, maybe in one minute he finishes the race. This other man was running without any wind against him. And he finishes in uh, half a minute. They will measure everything. They will say, this man ran against a head wind. Therefore, even though he finished later than this other man, he has a greater record than this other man. Paul says, winds are blowing against my soul. The devil is, is, is roaring. The world is determined. Circumstances are contrary. He said, but look at me well. When you see me, I'm pressing forward. Look at me well. When you see me, I'm pushing forward. Because there is a final mark, a prize ahead of me I want to win. I focus on the future. Brothers and sisters, are you focusing on the future? Or are you looking at the past? Busy with the present? Are you looking ahead? Let me close with point number three. Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. Look at verse 18. Here is Paul the Apostle still telling us in another letter. He said, I reckon. I reckon. All of you believers this morning, I want you to reckon. I reckon. I sit down and I count. I calculate. That word reckon does not just mean supposing or idea. He sits down and does balanced calculation. 
I reckon that the sufferings of this present time they are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What Paul to finish to win the prize? What was it that helped him? He said, I reckon. I look at the future. I see the glory coming. I see the crown coming. I see the joy coming. I see the, the exaltation coming. I see the honor coming. And I look at the present problem. I look at the present difficulty. I look at the present. The, uh, the, the present obstacles or whatever you call it. He says, I look ahead. I focus on the future. He says, when I look at the future, all of a sudden, all the trouble of the present, difficulty of the present, shame of the present, uh, ridicule of the present, hunger of the present, because I took my stand for God. I refuse to compromise my faith. Because I refuse to deny Christ. They deny me my office. What belongs to me? Legitimately. In the family, they deny me. In the city, they deny me. Because of Christ. He said, I reckon. All those things is useless. Compared to the glory that is coming my way. And Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my goal. I have kept the faith. They said, ends for their lady crown. Laid up for me. That is going to be given to me. Because I have reckoned that the sufferings I may have for Christ today, for living for Christ, for serving Christ, he says they are nothing compared to what is ahead. What helps a woman? to pull through the pangs of childbirth. What helps an athlete to pull through the rigors of training? What helps a patient to pull through the pain of repeated surgery? What helps a student to pull through the troubles of all night study? is what is coming ahead. And that's what helped Paul the Apostle. What helped Abraham to forsake the opulence of all of the Chaldees. To so go and live in the desert. Just last Monday, when we were coming back from where I went, and even when we went there, I passed through Egypt, spent some days there. For hours and hours and hours in aeroplane, you see barren land, desert, desert, desert all over. No grass, just desert, just sand, 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 sand. That as it is in Egypt, that's the same vegetation in the in Canaan. Oh, no. Egypt what made Abraham to leave all the riches and the wealth and the opulence of his all the Chaldees where he came from to travel to desert to go and be living under tents and under under canopies? The Bible tells us that man had respect unto the recompense of the reward. What helped Moses to forsake the, the palace of Pharaoh to identify with God's suffering people? What was it? That man looked at the future. He looked at the desert. He looked at what would happen. The Red Sea that will be parted. The manna that will come from heaven. The wall of fire that will come around. The miracles that he would perform. The name that he would obtain. The vision of God that he would see. The, the voice of God that he would hear. The books of the Bible that he would rise. An unforgettable name that he would have. Appearing on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus Christ that he would have. 
you just do money. I don't know whether you could see those things ahead. But if you could see those things, then he saw those things. He said, What's all this? This small, small thing? To be a king in the palace of a man when I can be a king in the palace of the Almighty God? He put aside all those things. Are you looking at the future? There's a future ahead of you. Tomorrow is ahead of you. Heaven is ahead of you. Crown is ahead of you. Jesus is ahead of you. Angels are ahead of you. The Pearly Gate is ahead of you. The Spirit of God is ahead of you. The angels singing is ahead of you. The music of heaven is ahead of you. The joy of heaven is ahead of you. Eternity with God is ahead of you. Will you not be occupied with all that and forget about whatever pain you are having here in this world? And focus on the future. That's what Paul did. He won the prize. Look at Philippians chapter 3. As we close, in Philippians chapter 3, that man said in verse, in verse 13, he said, Look, I've had a past. I've got a present. He said, But my brethren, even now, I don't count myself to have got anything. I don't touch anything. That tells you, believer, you think you have something, throw it all. He said, I don't count myself to have got it. He said, but there's only one thing I do. A man of one thing will be preeminently successful. He said, one thing I do, forgetting. Forgetting. It's difficult, but you have to do it. Forgetting. You have preached. It will be difficult to forget it, but forget it. Forgetting. Something bad happened. It may be difficult, but you have to forget it. Forgetting. Something joyful happened. Thank God, but you have to forget it. Forgetting those things which are behind. Forget it. And you reach forward. Reach forward. There are things before you. I've told you some of them. I couldn't tell you a lot of them. But there is something ahead of you. And your pastor here made up his mind. Many years ago, after preaching the any last message, oh, say, I forget that message. After leading a soul to Christ, say, I forget that one. After praying and somebody was held, I forget that one. After counseling and somebody was edified, I forget about that one. After we did the workers retreat, and believers are saying we have never seen this before. I forget it. After building all those buildings, I say forget it. After getting people together to do good, good things for God, say forgetting the things behind. And there is still something ahead. I have not got to where Paul got to. I have not achieved what Peter did. I have not got to what John did. I have not done one tenth of what Moses did. I forget the past. I'm looking forward to the future. Are there people here this morning who want to join me to forget the past and just look at the future and say Jesus ahead of me like this. And he is the one I'm going to focus on. I forget my bad past. And if you are here this morning, as I close, if you are a sinner, I don't call you sinner because I think I'm better than you are. It's because the Bible says all have sinned. Come short of the glory of God. And I call you to Christ today. Come out of sin to Jesus. Forget all your bad life. Christ can give you a new life. And for you believers, because I know you are there, born again, children of God, there is something in your past that you are refusing to forget. And anytime you want to go forward, it fills your mind. It looms large in your mind. And you cannot go forward. The Lord said, I should tell you to forget that thing. And go forward because there is a greater future ahead of you. Your consecration, remember it. Remember where you started. Remember what you said. Remember what you told God. Remember what you opened your mouth and spoke. Have you gone back on it? 
it. The Lord is calling you back to that point. And today, let's be like Paul. So we can win the prize. How many of you want to win the prize? I want to win the prize. The prize that God will... Not the one Olympic people will put in your hand. That's useless. I'm talking about the prize. When the whole world will be assembled. From righteous Abel to the last saint that will be born again. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people in God's great hall, all seated, and God seated on His throne. And there is a podium here, right in the front there, and He calls your name, and God Almighty reads your citation. He says, my sister, my what? daughter. He, he calls your name. He says, Janet. Janet. He says, uh, Joseph. Joseph. Or he says, Josephine. Josephine. Or he says, come, up, come out mambo, 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 And when he calls mambo. your name, mambo, 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 two people will be bearing that name. You are the only one who will be bearing that name. There may be one million Josephines there. But when he calls your name, everybody will know you are the one they are calling. And you, you, you stand up. You march for like this before this eternal congregation and then, and then he says look at her that's my one of my champions and he says look at her well that one she suffered she stood she served she did everything they beat her they tormented her she was crying but she stood she suffered because of restitution she couldn't enjoy many things maybe she even died as a widow or a a, a woman without husband and he says look at her well and now I've chosen to honor her before you people when he begins to talk about you you will be looking at yourself am I the one God is talking about or is he talking about another person uh, he says don't worry you are the one I'm talking about and then, and then God, God he comes down from his throne and then he wipes the tears from your eyes and he takes his own medal I don't know how the medal will look like I don't know how the crown will look like the Bible tells me it's a crown of gold. No king in this world has that kind of crown. And he puts it on your head. And you, are, you, you say, me? I deserve this? Me? He says, you deserve more than that. You are That's the day I'm looking for. I don't know what you are looking for. That's my goal. That's my goal. And I'm going to get there. I'm going to win that crown. I'm going to get that prize. I forget the past. Whatever might have happened, whatever I might have done, I will not stop. Until I get to that point, when God calls me like this, holds my hand and takes me on an excursion all through heaven. He says, come along my child. Let's go to heaven. Let me show you the glory. Let me show you the honor. Let me show you the pride. Let me show you your hope. And he takes me on an excursion. He takes my hand. And then we are going together. We are going all over heaven. We are going all over heaven. He says, Come along, come along. Come along. Come My child, come you have fought a good fight. You are the one. You deserve the crown. You deserve the honor. You deserve the praise. And angels will stand at attention because I am passing. Because I am passing. And they will bow their heads. Because God will be with me. And we'll be going together like this. On that day, where will you be? On that day. Will you win your crown? Will you win your prize? Will you win your own? I forget the past. I forget the present. Look at the future. There's a great future ahead of you. Don't you miss that future. Don't you lose that future. Whatever the devil may do, make up your mind. I will go right on. 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 I will not stop. I will not stop. I will not stop. No, I will just go. Oh, my Lord. 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 And you know on that day, know, oh, you will be surprised the honor that you alone will win. Oh, yeah, oh, no. oh, that one. Because, because of Christ. Oh, yeah, oh, because no. of Christ. I have fought a good fight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Forget about the past. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And press forward. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you are thinking of backsliding, oh, where will you backslide? Oh, no, Forget oh, yeah. about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this happened, that happened. Oh, yeah. What is that compared to the glory coming ahead? When the glory you are the one is meant for. I pray you will not use your crown.
There's an every waiting for you. There is a home in every waiting for you. And it is particularly for you. It is particularly for you. For sin and self will not allow you to be there. Sin and self will not allow you to be there. Forget about your past sin. I've come to the Lord today. Tell him you are sorry of the past. Tell him you are sorry of the past. Tell him you want him to pardon you. Tell God I am sorry. Any part of God I'm becoming lukewarm. I'm becoming money, money, my dad. Money, my dad. Tell God I am sorry. I will press forward. In Jesus' name we pray. They are too bad. Do not enter one. If I do yet, what's your door? Lord, no glory of your Lord, no fear any. It's more it's more kind than being angry at you. O tell Lord, you pay for what being with your Lord. He will forgive you your past sin, which you have confessed and promised to forsake. Father, we thank you very much because of your great love for us. Thank you for this, our brothers and sisters who are giving their lives to you today. Just they were before the devil took them over. But now you are taking them over from the hand of the enemy. Lord, they have confessed their sins. They have promised you that they will not go back to them again. I pray, O oh Lord, that the great grace that, is, that has been sufficient for others will be sufficient to them, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray that from today, Give them a new heart. Give them a new life. Give them a new name. Tell them henceforth that they will begin to live righteously, uprightly, holy late unto you alone in Jesus' name. When temptation we come, when trials we come, when the devil we come, give them grace to overcome in Jesus' name. Write their name in the book of the Lamb of God. And at the end, Take them to heaven. Thank you, dear Father. Lord, we pray for the rest of all. We know that as the coming of the Lord is drawing nigh, many are going away from the Lord. The first are becoming the last already. Iniquity, iniquity is abounding. And the love of many is waxing cold. But oh, Lord, you have come to remind us once again that the face of this world will not matter anything when we consider the eternity. Whatever the achievement, whatever the power, whatever the honor, whatever the greatness that we have in this world, it did not matter in eternity. And whatever we do it will not matter in eternity. But Lord, we are coming before you. And we are asking you that you will grant us grace to press forward every day to the man of our, of our high calling in Jesus' name. Lord, we are asking you that wherever our hearts are becoming cold, wherever our, our love is becoming cold, we are praying, Father, Thanks for tear us up in Jesus' name. Lord, we are praying the best to always look up to heaven. The best to always look up to that Christ that is out and ahead of us. We are praying, Father, you will grant unto us in Jesus' name. 
and the things of this world will not cloud our sight. The things of this world will not cloud our vision. Help us to follow you to the end, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, dear Father, that every day as we wake up, help us to be dead to self, to die to the things of this world, to die to the honor of this world, or to die to the shame of this world. But to be alive to the things of heaven in Jesus' name. Thank you, dear Father. We pray that your grace will be sufficient unto us. And we we'll press forward until we see you face to face. So that on that day, when saints will be wearing their crown, when those that have labor will be receiving their reward, we will be there as well with them in Jesus' name. Thank you, dear Father. Give us grace to continue with you to the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.